Good evening. I'm Dr. Norman K. Miles, Sr., Senior Pastor of the Trinity Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church in Newark, New Jersey. For the next few evenings, Pastor Carl Brewer, Associate Pastor of the Trinity Temple Church, and myself will be sharing with you some thoughts from the seven last words of Jesus. These are the seven expressions that the Gospel writers record Jesus making while he was hanging from the cross. Often, what a person says at the end of life is the most significant thing that that person has ever said. Because at the end of life, people tend to be most honest and most authentic. We even say that people who speak of their end of life wishes have made their last will and testament. And so we can say that these words represent Jesus' last will and testament for the human race. So I'd like to begin by sharing with you his first word, which is recorded in the book of Luke chapter 23. I'm going to read verses 23, 33 and 34. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right hand and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. As you think about what happened to Jesus in the period of time between Thursday evening when he was arrested and Friday afternoon when he was crucified, I don't know that any person has ever suffered in such a short period of time so much physical and psychological trauma. Think about it. He was suddenly arrested in the garden, taken to the house of the high priest, tried in an illegal court, hauled off to the Roman governor to be condemned to death, then shuttled over to the palace of the Tetrarch to be interviewed again, then shuttled back to the Roman governor, sent to the garrison where he was stripped and beaten, brought back to the Roman governor to appear before a huge crowd, and he heard his own people, some of whom had just a few days before been shouting, Hosanna, save us, Lord. Now they were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And he saw this man, Barabbas, a robber, a revolutionary, a murderer, go free while he was condemned to death. He was lashed to a, to a cross beam, and he had to carry that beam up a hill to the place of execution, Golgotha, the place of the skull. And he was so exhausted because of the beating and the trauma he'd gone through that he collapsed under the load of that, of that beam and someone had to be pulled from the crowd to help him carry the load. When he reached the top of the hill, he was stretched out on the ground and his hands were nailed to that cross beam. And the cross beam was raised up and attached to the vertical bar and his feet were nailed to the cross. And now from that position, that vantage point, between the earth and the sky, stripped naked of his clothing while soldiers gambled around uh, at the foot of the cross as to see who would get his robe. He said these words, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Who, is the, who were the they he was talking about? Could it be the Roman guards who were crucifying him? Probably, but in a sense, they knew exactly what they were doing. They had done this before. They were experts at being able to cause the maximum amount of pain and yet not take a person's life immediately. Maybe he was thinking about those who, those leaders who had tried him and falsely condemned him. Maybe he was thinking about Pilate, who knew he was innocent, but because of political expediency, went on and said, let the crowd have it. I'm washing my hands of all of this. Maybe he was thinking about his disciples, who in his hour of greatest need just took off and ran away from him. 
Well, I think the answer is all of the above and more. He was not only thinking about them, he was thinking about all the people down through history who would need forgiveness. Because forgiveness was part of what Jesus did. He forgave a woman caught in adultery. He forgave a man who was a paralytic, forgave him of his sins. When Peter talked about uh, forgiveness and asked him, well, how often should I forgive my brother? Should I forgive him seven times? And Jesus said, no, no, seven times 70. Don't even count. Anytime your brother asks for forgiveness, extend it. And even at his last supper, he said that his blood represented uh, the wine represented his blood that would be shed so that people could be forgiven. And there hanging on the cross, naked and ashamed and in excruciating pain, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It wasn't just the them at the cross. It was the Saul of Tarsus who he would later on confront on the road to Damascus and say, why are you persecuting me, Saul? It was everybody during the course of history who sinned against the living God, everybody in need of forgiveness. This is what Jesus was talking about. He said, Father, forgive them because they really don't know what they're doing. They don't understand the significance of crucifixion. But he did. He understood that crucifixion would change everything in the world. His death would be the way that humanity would be reconciled to God once again. And the cross, which was an instrument of torture and shame and death, would be considered the universal symbol of love and reconciliation and hope. And just as he said, to his father, forgive them. He also says, forgive the them, that's you and that's me. Father, forgive them, for they don't understand the consequences of their sin. Father, forgive them because they don't really understand how, how repugnant sin is to the holy God. Father, forgive them because they're finite, and they're made of flesh. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And because he asked the Father to forgive us, we are forgiven indeed.